Please see the link in the description to download a worksheet for this video. Although we do not show video or photographs of any animals being killed or eaten, we have to talk about this as it happens in many ecosystems, which is the topic of this lesson. If you know a child or other viewer who is sensitive to this topic, we advise that someone screens this video first to ensure the content will not disturb that viewer before she or he is allowed to watch this. An ecosystem is a community of living things that interact with each other and their environment. Ecosystems can be any size and any location. For example, an ecosystem might include vast plains in Africa or a river in Italy or hundreds of miles of ocean along the coast of North America. Regardless of the place or size of an ecosystem, all ecosystems have three types of living things, producers of food, consumers of food, and decomposers. Scientists use the word organism to mean something living, such as a plant, animal, or a decomposer. Although we might think of potted plants when someone says plants, the word plants includes many types of organisms that make their own food using the power from sunlight. Plants include everything from giant sequoia trees to thick forest underbrush to blades of grass. During a process called photosynthesis, plants make their own food by using the energy from sunlight to combine water and parts of the air to make sugars. Photosynthesis is also how plants release oxygen into the environment, which animals use to breathe. Photosynthesis happens in the green parts of plants. Since plants produce their own food, plants are the producers in almost all ecosystems. You can remember that another name for plants is producers, because the produce section of a grocery store has plants in their fruits. The animals in the ecosystem are called the consumers. You can remember that another name for animals is consumers, because in everyday use, we use the word consumer to mean a person who consumes a product, which could mean eating fresh produce. Animals that only eat plants are called herbivores. Examples of herbivores that live close to humans are sheep, cows, and horses. Examples of wild herbivores include deer, buffalo, zebras, and rhinos. Animals that eat other animals are called carnivores. There are two types of carnivores, predators and scavengers. Predators kill other animals and eat them. Common examples are cats, such as lions and tigers, dogs, such as foxes and wolves, bears, such as black bears and polar bears, most fish, including sharks, most reptiles, including turtles, snakes, and alligators, and most mammals that live in the water, including dolphins and seals. In contrast to predators that kill animals then eat them, scavengers eat dead animals that they find. Vultures are well known for being scavengers, but many predators also eat dead animals that they find, so they scavenge also. A food chain shows what animals eat, and if they are eaten by other animals. In this food chain, grass is at the bottom because it is the food producer. The grass is eaten by a grasshopper. That grasshopper is eaten by a frog. The frog is eaten by a snake, and the snake is eaten by an alligator. The animal at the top of a food chain is called the apex predator. That's the predator that is not eaten by other animals. In the swamps of Florida, the alligator is the apex predator. On the plains of Africa, the lions are the apex predators. In the oceans, killer whales are the apex predators. A food web is a picture of all the food chains in an ecosystem. The last of the three ecosystem members we will discuss are the decomposers. Decomposers are organisms that break down dead organisms. The most common examples of decomposers are mushrooms, which are a type of fungus. Mold is another type of fungus. Other decomposers include bacteria, which are too small for us to see individually. Decomposers do not eat organisms. Instead, they dissolve the dead organism 
and then absorb its nutrients. Some of the nutrients are also absorbed into the soil and get recycled by plants. Decomposers are very important for recycling nutrients in an ecosystem. For simplicity, until now we have mentioned only land-based plants as examples of producers. These one-cell organisms are a type of plankton that are the major producers in oceans, so directly or indirectly, they support almost all life in the sea. They do so much photosynthesis that they are credited with putting about half of all the oxygen in the atmosphere that we and other animals breathe. Although they do photosynthesis, these producers are not plants. Here's a summary of ecosystem definitions. Please pause this video if you wish. Food contains two things, nutrients and energy. The nutrients are recycled in the ecosystem, but the energy flows through and out of the ecosystem and is constantly replaced. This is one of the most important facts about ecosystems, so it is likely to be a question on an exam or test. As a way to remember the difference between nutrients and energy movement in an ecosystem, let's use an analogy. Let's say we want to build a castle out of wooden blocks. By the time we're almost done with the first wall, then we decide to build a stadium instead of a castle. We can reuse the same blocks. That means we have recycled the blocks. But the time and most importantly, the energy we spent on building the castle is gone forever. We cannot get that energy back. Once energy has been used to do something, the energy has flowed out of the system. In an ecosystem, the nutrients are like the wooden blocks. They can be turned into different shapes depending on what organism they are in. When a cow eats grass, the cow turns the nutrients in grass into cow parts. When a horse eats grass, the horse turns the nutrients in the grass into horse parts. When the cow or horse breathe out air, there are tiny nutrients in their breath. When those nutrients in their breath touch a blade of grass, then through the process of photosynthesis, the grass can turn those nutrients back into grass. This is an example of the nutrients being recycled. In contrast, when an animal uses the energy in the food to run, then that energy is gone forever. The producers in the ecosystem, such as grass, are constantly capturing new energy in the form of sunlight, which they use to turn the nutrients into sugars, which is a way to store energy. This is a typical picture showing how nutrients are recycled in an ecosystem with herbivores and carnivores. Nutrients pass through every animal that eats them. Sometimes, instead of using the word nutrients, we use the word matter. The word matter is the scientific way of saying the word stuff. So you may hear people say matter is recycled in an ecosystem. This is a typical picture showing how energy flows through an ecosystem. This energy pyramid is like a food web in that it puts the producers at the bottom and has levels for consumers depending on how high they are in a food web. Only 10% of the energy in each level of the ecosystem is transferred to the level above it. Almost all of the energy in each level is used up by the organisms in each level when they run or do other things. A lot of energy is lost as heat. Since almost any organism in an ecosystem could become food for another organism, from an accounting perspective, we can consider each organism as a collection of nutrients and energy. If an organism leaves an ecosystem or is destroyed in a fire, then the energy in its body is lost from the ecosystem. Other major causes of energy loss in an ecosystem include long periods with no rain, which causes many organisms to die. Or if there is a large movement of organisms that leave an ecosystem, such as during migration, which we'll discuss shortly. Here's a summary of energy flow and the nutrient cycle in an ecosystem. Please pause this video if you wish. The final ecosystem topic we'll introduce is called adaptation. An adaptation is a structure or behavior that a type of organism has to help it survive. Instead of using the phrase type of organism, scientists use the word species. For example, a dog, human, and lavender plant are three different species. All species try to survive by having its members make or find enough food and avoid being eaten or dying from other causes. 
Each species has ways to help it survive in a particular ecosystem. Carnivores typically have sharp claws and teeth to catch other animals. Their eyes are in the front of their heads, so they can estimate the distance to the animal they want to catch. Herbivores, which are often eaten by carnivores, usually have eyes on the sides of their heads, so they can get a wide field of view, and will have an early warning if a carnivore is coming close. Herbivores do not have sharp teeth or claws. Some herbivores have horns to defend against attacking carnivores. Herbivores often have coloring similar to their surroundings, so they can hide from predators. Likewise, predators often have coloring similar to their surroundings, so they will not be noticed by animals they are trying to catch. Coloring that blends in with its surroundings is called camouflage. Some animals have adapted so they can eat food that other animals cannot, such as giraffes becoming very tall so they can reach tree leaves. All the features we've mentioned so far are called structural adaptations because they describe how the animal looks. A behavioral adaptation is how the animal behaves. Behavioral adaptations among herbivores include being easily frightened or startled, so they run away whenever they think there could be a predator nearby. Some animals live in groups so that they can fight off predators together or take turns to be on the lookout for predators. Some predators also live in groups, but so that they can hunt together. Some animals migrate, which means to travel a long distance, so they can have more food or better weather. American bison migrate during the winter in search of food. Some birds migrate south during the cold months. Migration reminds us that animals may change what ecosystem they belong to. For example, some Canadian geese might live in an ecosystem in Minnesota during the summer and then fly to South Carolina where they live during the winter. Even though the specific location, and therefore the specific ecosystem, where an animal lives may change. An animal's habitat is the term we use to describe the conditions where an animal can survive. Using the Canadian geese example, their natural habitat is to be near shallow freshwater. Freshwater means free of salt, and is the water in ponds, rivers, and lakes. So, even if a flock of Canadian geese live in two different ecosystems that are hundreds of miles apart depending on the month of the year, they always live in the same habitat, which is one with shallow fresh water. Likewise, although the North Atlantic right whale can live in ecosystems that are in the warm waters near Florida or cool waters near Maine, their habitat is always in an ocean, so they only live in salt water and never in fresh water such as one of the Great Lakes, let alone in a pond with some Canadian geese. Although both Canadian geese and the North Atlantic right whales both like water, their habitats are very different. If many animals or plants of a species die, then their population can become very low. And if all the members of that species die, then we say that species is extinct. Famous examples of extinct species include all of the dinosaur species. Species become extinct when they fail to adapt to change in every ecosystem that their members are living in. Such changes include food or water shortage, too many predators eating them, or extreme temperatures such as too hot or too cold for them. All organisms of all species are constantly struggling to survive by finding enough food and avoid being killed. As populations of organisms grow, fall, or disappear through extinction, this changes the ecosystem. An ecosystem is always in a state of change, which scientists describe with the word dynamic. Ecosystems are dynamic. Here's a summary of adaptation. Please pause this video if you wish. If you're interested in practice tests that are similar to state exams, but with detailed, colorful explanations for each answer, then please see our apps in the App Store. Many of these are free and none expire or limit their function. Since we only make educational products for children, none of our apps have third-party advertising, in-app purchasing, or connect to the internet. Please subscribe if you'd like to be notified of future educational videos we make. Thanks for your attention.